Hi, my name is Phil Schrader, and I'll be talking to you today about incompatible target skipping. This is a feature that Austin Shu proposed last year together with Greg Estrin from Google. Since about March or so of this year, we have been slowly working on the implementation, and this should be available for you on master. I am joined today by Austin, who will host the second half of the presentation. The two of us mentor the Mountain View High School robotics team, where we encounter the motivating examples for this proposal quite often. So talking about motivating examples, what is incompatible target skipping? Well, let's explore this with a very innocuous example, which should hopefully make it pretty obvious. Let your imagination go wild and picture yourself wanting to fix a basil bug. Crazy idea, I know, but bear with me. So what do you do? You check out the Bazel repo, you make your change, and because you're a good developer, you want to run all the tests. How do you do that? Well, obviously the right, the right answer is to run Bazel test slash slash dot dot dot. Unfortunately, as you can see, no good developer goes unpunished. On the screenshot, uh, you can see that test basil test slash slash dot 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 doesn't actually work because it'll build targets and run tests that will just never work for your platform. In this case, we're running on a Linux machine and this Windows only target will not compile. So the goal of incompatible target skipping is to recognize targets like this and just skip them during the build or the test, whatever you're doing. Okay, let's do a quick recap of what platforms and toolchains look like in case you haven't made that jump yet for your own project. Formally, a platform is a collection of constraint value targets. These targets describe the properties of the platform. The Bazel build platforms repo contains the most common constraints that you will need. It defines things like running on an ARM CPU or running on a Linux OS, stuff like that. And they're happy to accept more contributions for other constraints. The repo is really meant to serve all authors to express constraints with a common vocabulary. The repo does ship with Bazel, but it may be outdated. So you might have to import your own version for what you need. At a high level, Bazel knows about three platforms, the host platform, the target platform, and the execution platform. The host is what you run Bazel on, the target is what you're compiling for, and the execution platform is what the compiler is running on. These can, in simple cases, all be the same, but they can also all be different. For example, on the robotics team, we have five target platforms that we compile for. Here we have two example platforms. They each list the constraints that describe that platform. Even though they're both Linux, like you can see with the at platforms OS Linux constraint, the CPU constraint makes them different. So we have a Linux x86 platform and a Linux ARM platform. And when invoking Bazel, you tell it, you specify the host platform and the target platform. So you can say, I'm compiling on x86 Linux and I'm compiling for ARM Linux. You can then define a tool chain that describes what platform it can run on and what platform it can compile for. And what you see here in this example is that is a tool chain that can run on x86 Linux and compiles for x86 Linux. Similarly, you can define a cross compiler. Notice here that the tool chain targets a different platform than the one it runs on. So we're running, we're running on x86 Linux and we're targeting ARM Linux. And really what I want you to take away here is that the platforms and tool chains use constraints to communicate about compatibility. Notice that we're using the constraints from the at platforms repo. And again, I really want to emphasize that these are the ones that you should be using in your own project. Don't try to redefine them on your own. And there are ways that you can already use constraints to influence the build. One of the workarounds, for example, that we have to teach the kids for slash slash dot 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 building everything is to use select on the CIOPS and the sources. And these are perfectly legitimate use cases. I'm really just showing them here for uh, completeness. All right, so how can we do better? Well, let's start with a universally compatible target. This binary here will compile for all platforms. When you see this in a build file, that's the first conclusion that you should be able to draw. 
Let's introduce the new attribute called target compatible with. In this attribute, you can specify constraints that the target platform must satisfy for the target to get built. An empty list like the one that you see here means that there are no constraints on the target and it's therefore compatible with every platform. This might be a bit awkward to interpret at first, but it will make more sense once you start using it. And it'll come in handy later in the slides. So let's modify the example slightly. Here we restrict the target to the Windows platform. That means that Bazel will skip over this target when building for, say, Linux. Going back to our original motivating example with Bazel test slash slash dot 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 on the Bazel repo, this is what we would have wanted that Windows only target to be marked with. You can also get more specific, as specific as you like, really, on the constraints. So here we're saying that bin is only compatible with x86-64 windows. And the attribute is transitive. If a target is incompatible and should be skipped, then all targets that depend on it are also themselves considered incompatible. For example, the sh binary target here will only be built for windows. On all other platforms, the target will simply be skipped during the build. Here we have a screenshot of Bazel skipping that incompatible target. And you can see that we're building on Linux here and that the Windows only target is skipped. On the other hand, when you explicitly specify an incompatible target, then Bazel will yell at you. Here you see what Bazel is unhappy about and tell you exactly which target is incompatible and why. So it lists the constraint that was violated. And while we were working on the implementation for this, we actually discovered a few neat things that you can do with select statements when used together with target compatible with. I'll show you one of those neat things in the next couple slides. First, let's create a constraint that no platform satisfies. We're giving it the name not compatible. The next few slides will show you why this is useful. With this not compatible constraint, you can use select to express or logic. Here we're saying that the binary is compatible with Linux or Mac OS, but not with anything else. The empty lists can be interpreted to mean that no constraints need to be satisfied. On Linux and Mac OS, therefore, we have no constraints and the target is considered compatible. It will be built. On anything other than Linux and Mac OS, say Windows, we require that the not compatible constraint be satisfied. But since no platform actually satisfies this constraint, the target will be considered incompatible and will thus be skipped on all platforms other than Linux and Mac OS. So on Windows, Bazel will skip this target when building with slash slash dot dot dot. You can also invert the compatibility by switching the results of the select. So on Linux and Mac OS, this new target is not compatible. On all, plat on all other platforms, the target is compatible. Theoretically, anything that you can select on can be used to express compatibility. And that is definitely something we're thinking about a lot. Again, this is available to you at Bazel Head, and we really hope that this is useful to you guys. And we'd love to hear your feedback on this. And of course, bug reports. And now I'll hand it off to Austin, who will expand on these concepts. Thank you. OK, thank you, Phil. So let's go over what goes into a platform. So these should be properties of the physical machine. So it's things like the CPU, or the operating system, or the glibc version. These really tell you kind of what software is going to be able to run on the machine. CPU, both like which instruction set. Operating system will tell you kind of which, is, which syscalls. And glibc is going to help you with a lot of the compatibility. Um, these are not properties of the build. So things like Clang and GCC, those two compilers, they will target most major systems. Um, it is not a property of the target whether or not it will work with Clang or GCC. And the same goes with versions. Um, Clang and GCC, the versions shouldn't really matter, especially in more modern versions for most platforms. Um, so let's go through another example. So say we want to use protobuf in C++. Well, let's say it's on an embedded system. Um, these will typically require a custom compiler. So there's going to be a little bit more setup there, or maybe on Windows. Um, and we just want it to work. Well, this is probably going to require some custom flags for each of those targets to make everything work correctly. 
So let's look at some examples from protobuf. This is um, on master. Uh, so here we can see there's a select statement for setting the CIOPS. So in the Microsoft compiler here, we're picking one set of flags, whereas for the rest of the systems, we have a different set of flags. Um, from looking at these flags, this looks like it's mostly post six flags. And if we go into another example here, we're looking at link options. So here we're saying Android, none of these three variants needs any extra flags. But that Microsoft compiler again, it needs a certain set. And then the rest of the systems need an even uh, different set of flags. Um, so if we look into how that works, um, this isn't stellar. So here we're going and we're saying if the cross tool top flag has been specified as Android NTK, um, that string, then we must be running on this type of Android. Otherwise, if the cross tool top is set to this other magical string, then that means we are running on this other version of Android. So there's a little too much um, magic strings here floating around, and this is not really going to scale up to a bunch of, bunch of different systems. So if we look at a gRPC example here, um, this is a test case that does not work on iOS. It does not work on Windows. And here's a new concept here that we haven't, inter haven't introduced so far. It does not work with MSAN. So MSAN is this property of how our compiler is configured. And we're saying that this test doesn't really work when it's configured that way. So what do we really want as a user? Well, I just want protobuf to work. I don't want to think about any of this. And if I am forced to think about it, so say I find an issue or find a flag I need to make my build work, I won't want to be able to take that flag and I want to be able to upstream it and send it up to protobuf so that I don't have to do it again. And that means I need to do it in a way that's reasonably robust and will work for other people and not break other people's build. So, What's building a library look like in Bazel? Well, we start with Bazel. We're going to specify a bunch of flags. This is things like compiler uh, options, um, potentially even cross tool top that we saw above, um, all sorts of things. Uh, we're going to specify a tool chain so we can uh, register various different C, C or C++ compilers, Go compilers, all sorts of things there. We're going to tell Bazel a platform that we're trying to target. Um, this tells it like what we're building for. Are we building for our robot here? Or are we trying to build for you know, the, the hardware that Bazel is running on or some other piece of hardware? Um, so then from there, toolchain selection is going to happen. So that's where Bazel takes all that information into account and tries to figure out exactly which compiler we want to use. Um, from there, it's going to produce a CC toolchain info. So this contains all the information about our compiler to tell us exactly how to do that build. Um, and then that's used to really configure the graph here. So protobuf, we're going to change the select statements and uh, change how it's built and generate the build commands for that. And then if we go down and we're building our now binary that depends on protobuf, um, that's going to be configured uh, the same way. So uh, there's a small asterisk here. The arrow is not always quite that simple. There's some cases where it will a slightly different behavior will happen. But this is a useful enough approximation that um, it's really you can think about it this way. Um, and really, those approximations where that fails, that will make this discussion even more relevant. So uh, what can change? Well, user can come with a bunch of custom compilers um, with embedded systems in C and C++ compilers. This is quite common. Most embedded systems will come with a C++ compiler that's been um, configured to work for them. Users will also want to build for many different platforms, especially in an embedded world where you have a bunch of different targets, sometimes multiple of them in a build. And then uh, the user is going to really select a bunch of different flags and um, change how Bazel is configured. And that's really going to influence tool chain selection. And with all the number of inputs here, it is really not reasonable to be able to reproduce the logic inside tool chain selection downstream. So um, the user can, or the library writer here, so this is someone like Protobuf, um, they're not going to be able to know all of the various users of their library. So it is not reasonable for Protobuf to know everybody using it. And so that's, that's going to make it hard on them. Um, and really, in the end, we want this to not be brittle. We, we want to be able to change things in this and have everything continue to work reasonably reliably. So this means we need reasonable interfaces. We need to be able to describe how information is communicated. So um, I will argue that our interfaces here are the platform. So this really is talking about the, the physical aspects of the target. And then also the compiler, as we've seen, that's useful for configuring our graph. And that means that these fields in the tool chain become part of our interface. And that means there's a contract. Where there's an interface, there's a contract. So we need to agree on which fields there are you know, public and private. 
and also um, what the various values are. So if we're trying to figure out if something's GCC and we spell it two different ways, GCC or GCC, um, that's not gonna be very good for the software downstream if we don't have a good contract there. So we really need to agree, both as the people defining the toolchain and the community, what's useful and make sure that's captured. Um, is this enough? Well, things like the compiler name, the various settings, um, the configurations for it, MSAN, uh, UBSAN, um, all those various types of things, those can come through the toolchain. That's a very natural place to put those type of properties. And then um, things like our target architecture, so like what target we're targeting, um, those can come through the platform. It's a good fit for those. So let's revisit our gRPC example from before. So we can take the Windows and iOS constraints where we were saying that the test did not work on those platforms, and we can put that in the target compatible with. So that's pretty awesome, got that part solved. And now we're left really with the no MSAN part. So that's really a property of the toolchain and a property of how the compiler is configured. Um, so how do we represent that? If we look here, we can actually pull the compiler field out of the toolchain. We can place that in a feature flag info and return that. We can pu we're pulling that out of the CC tool chain. You can see that down below. And then how can we use that? Well, here we can pass that into a config setting and we can detect when the compiler is GCC and use that to configure behavior. So at the bottom here, we're able to take is GCC and specify a different flag than when it is not GCC. So that's pretty cool. Um, how can we apply it here? Well, we can actually add it in with skipping. So we can use the trick that Phil showed before and say that if it is GCC, then there is nothing. So that means it's compatible with, otherwise it's not compatible. So this makes a target that only works on GCC. So this doesn't fully solve our MSAN case. Um, we still need to be able to pass um, the settings in there to try, and conf to try and detect if we're on a compiler configured for MSAN or not. Um, but this really gives us the tools to build that up. We can pass specify that information through the same routes. So where did we start before this? Well, we started with inconsistent representations of the platforms and constraints. Um, we we're able to configure our build with select based on the platform. Um, we we're able to do some limited stuff with um, selecting based on the toolchain, but really that was not being thought of as a strong interface. And now uh, we have added in skipping. So we can now skip based on the platform. And there are also tricks so we can skip based on the toolchain, depending on which compilers are selected and really have introduced the toolchain as a stronger interface to discuss. And our hope is this is enough to make Bazel test slash slash dot 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 work again on the most tricky projects. So thank you all for coming and joining us with this talk. Um, I'd like to thank Phil for presenting the first half and for Greg for all his advice and help when implementing this feature. Mm -hmm.